Hi there, and welcome to part six of my Stellaris Let's Play, Advanced Strategy Tips and Tricks. In this episode, I'm going to be looking at choosing your first colony buildings, picking a first ascension perk, migration pacts, and why you should never, ever build gene clinics. I hope you enjoy the episode. Here we are then. So we have our capital, which is nice on 35 population. We have four research labs, no other buildings. We have our first two colonies complete. And now we've just got up to five population on our first planet so we can build our first building slot. So I'm just going to stop the game here. I'm going to look at which building we should choose for our first building slot. So there are quite a few options available. Some of the options are much stronger than others. Now at the very beginning of the game you won't have much technology. So there are some building options which are much stronger than others. As I've talked about before on our capital the only two buildings we were really interested in building were the alloy foundry and the research lab. Now, without uh, the correct administration on your planet, without the upgraded planetary administration, you can't build a research lab. So until we get to a population of 10, this building is unavailable. So that really only leaves the alloy plant, the alloy foundry, as a building that we can choose. We could also choose to build an administration office. Now, if we look at our admin cap, at the moment, we're getting a plus 8% reduction to technology, which is definitely something, but that's about the same as having a half to one population in a research job. So that's not really a big deal. To spend two population on manning an administration office would be a real waste of our pops. Now, an alloy foundry, on the other hand, that's going to reduce our mineral income by about 12, and it will give us an extra six or more alloys. That would put us up to about 18 to 20 alloys. That's really quite good. That'll, that'll mean that we can start building a Corvette roughly every five to six months. Uh, whereas at the moment, it's around every 10 to 12 months. Now the Autocathon Monument, again, that's going to build unit, that's going to produce unity, but it's not going to increase our unity by very much, by about six. At the moment, we are 25 months away from completing our courier network. If we had changed our build to be specifically unity orientated, it might be useful. But actually, the alloys are much more important at this stage in the game. With civilian industries, now at the moment, we are getting civilian industries from our jobs and we're currently buying 10 of them a turn, which is, is actually hurting our our economy that's costing us around 26 energy each turn so building a civilian industry might seem like a good idea to offset that imbalance but what we're going to do is once we have our final tradition in the colonization slot we are going to change our trade policy to the consumer benefits policy and what that policy is going to do Instead of gaining 3.8 unity from trade, we're instead going to gain 3.8 consumer goods. We will be creating a planet for consumer goods, but it just it won't be this one. So let's build a, an alloy foundry here. This is going to massively increase our alloy production, which will in turn allow us to start building up a big fleet and that will mean that we can start competing with this nation for fleet power, our neighbor. On our third colony, I'm going to build an agriculture district uh, because I want to have each planet to be specialized towards one of, one of the different ones. Now, as you can see, my colony designation at the moment is picked automatically. As I build new buildings, as new pop, pops grow, that automatic designation will change. And the computer isn't necessarily very smart when it chooses which ones to have. So at the moment, we want this to be a generator world and to remain a generator world. If we were to change to a forge world, we would reduce the upkeep, the mineral upkeep, by 20%. 
which would mean that we'd go from producing uh, using six minerals per job down to 4.8. Over the two jobs, a 2.4 change in mineral usage, which is really not very much. We're going to make sure this world sticks on generator world. And Henary now, we've built this star base, so we're going to build a trade hub there. Now this anomaly, which has appeared, has appeared outside of where we are normally going to be surveying. These systems here, we're probably not going to get to use them because there's another empire in the way. So I'm going to actually take these anomalies and complete them. Now, looking at my expansion, I want to make sure that I grab this system here before the aliens over there do. Because if I grab this system, I'll be able to continue expanding west. And that it's really important to make sure you look for routes to keep expanding so that you don't get cut off. Uh, because up here there might be another civilization I haven't met before. So if I were to get cut off down here, that would be a real problem for me at this early stage in the game. Now with my research here, I'm going to be taking the field modulation technology. As that one's going to give me a nice bonus to my energy credit production, which is good. I've also had the offer of a migration treaty from my neighbors over here. Now, my neighbors are favor Alpine worlds, and I currently have one, two Alpine worlds. So what I could do is I could accept this migration treaty, which would allow me to build colony ships of their species, which would be good. So actually, at the moment, I'm going to accept this migration treaty because now I can colonize this world using their population, which is something I'm going to do. So I'm going to buy some consumer goods and I'm going to colonize this with their population. As you can see here, 70% habitability. And then now that I've colonized their world, oh, this is an this is a, an interesting one. You should always probe probe before you uh, before you dig in because it turns out to be a Trojan asteroid a lot of the time. So we're going to move away from that as quickly as possible. Receiving transmission. Uh, as you can see, we've been blocked off up items. here. And now we have our final policy in the tradition. We've unlocked an ascension perk. Brilliant. Now, the first ascension perk, there's always one, there's one you should always select of the available ascension perks. And I'm just gonna go through them quickly. So we've got Instastellar Dominion, which is going to reduce our influence cost. That can be okay. A 20% discount is something that you can get from two technologies in the society research though so it's it's not fantastic technologically technological ascendancy that's going to add a 10 percent bonus to our research bead that's fantastic 10 an extra 10 percent boost is brilliant and that's going to be there the whole game one vision that's going to increase our unity and decrease our amenities usage if you're playing a unity build that can be a useful pick a useful tradition Mastery of nature, it allows us to increase the number of districts our planets can support. That can be useful when, at a later stage in the game when you've really started to outgrow the size of your planets and you need more, more districts. Imperial prerogative, increasing our admin cap, that's pretty useless. You can build buildings to increase your overall admin cap and technologies give you an admin cap bonus. A 20% bonus to admin cap is pretty rubbish. Plus two edict capacity. Now this one is actually quite a useful one as edicts will increase your admin sprawl, uh, your empire sprawl quite a lot if you go over your edict capacity. So later on in the game, if you need more edicts, this can be quite useful. Transcendent learning, early game, it can be quite good to increase your experience gain quite a bit and lead a level cap. But in the later game, you're going to find that once you've unlocked all of the traditions, you've got a, and you've researched some of the technologies, you've got a max level of 10 on each of the leader categories anyway. So this plus two level leader level cap 
will be pretty useless. The plus 50% experience gain will be all right, but it will be an ascension perk that you've selected that you can't remove. Because the important thing to keep in mind is once you choose an ascension perk, you can't change the ascension perks. You, you can't remove them. And then finally, shared destiny. That would be quite good if we're playing with uh, lots of vassals, if we're trying to do some sort of um, vassal spam, which isn't very common. So the best one to pick first is always going to be technological ascendancy. Plus 10% research speed is going to be great. Because if we look over at technology now, we'll see that in physics, for instance, we're getting a plus 44% overall added to our research speed. That means that of our base 70.3 that we're producing, we're applying 100 research progress per month, which is really good. That means it's going to take us around 20 months to do the some of the initial 2000 point technologies, which is a really good speed, considering that when we started the game, we were looking at around 40 months for those. We've been invited to take part in a defensive pact as well with the aliens next to us. That's going to cost too much influence at this stage, so we're going to decline. There's no aliens near that we can see near us. It's really not worth it at this point. We've also run into uh, what I assume will be the marauders here. So we're, we're blocked off here. So that southern point is going to be really important for us to grab. And, and given where our science ship is and our construction ship, I think we're going to get it. Something else that might be useful to do is to grab Zovod and this planet, this system here, Chienagawa. And now that we've unlocked our first Ascension perk, we're going to change our trade policy, as I mentioned earlier. So instead of having the marketplace of ideas, we're going to take the consumer benefits because we're no longer really trying to rush this ascension perk. We've got our plus 10% research speed. We've got our bonuses to colonization. So we're going to change over and try and decrease the amount of consumer goods that we're buying each month. So if we wait for the month to tick over, we should see that we're now somewhere in the region of plus three, plus four in the positive. Research concluded. Brilliant, we're up to plus five. So I can reduce this by five that's going to save us around 15 energy credits per month 13 to 15 which is really good now looking at our technology here i am going to choose to take the admin cap as the dread encampment is again not something we need right now the tile blocker is nice but not completely useful uh, we haven't got any planets which are maxed out for the districts we're not we're not worried about that yet that is something we might look into later on and then we have genetic health care now genetic health care unfortunately is a really useless technology because it provides a useless building gene clinics are a trap they might seem like a good building but they're not if we look at the maths of this it's going to provide us a plus 10% a plus 10% to our um, to our population growth that translates into plus 0.3 so if we have plus 0.3 population uh, per per month how long will it take us to break even how much time will it take before we grow two population from that extra population growth because at that point we will have as many population as if we didn't have people working in those buildings so we will have made back our initial investment of two pops it takes 100 population points to grow our species uh, to grow a new pop so if we take 100 divide that by 0 0.3 that's 333 months times by two because we need two population that's 666 months if we divide that by 12 we're going to find that that's 55.55 years so it's going to take us 55.5 years before we get a return on our investment that's a massive massive amount of time for such a small benefit it's going to put us behind. It's going to take a building slot away from us. So we're not going to have a building slot where we could have a research lab or an alloy 
an alloy production factory or have a, uh, a robot pro producing factory or, or something that would be useful to us right now and immediately. So not only am I not going to build the building, I'm not going to take this technology. So I'm going to take the adapt adaptive bureaucracy. So to clarify, you should never, ever, 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 ever. You should never, ever build um, gene, the gene building. And we've encountered more cultists. They're at a higher fleet strength. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to upgrade my ships. I'm going to build a new ship. And then I'm going to try and increase my fleet power to around 10 to 12 ships, which should be a nice number to kind of take those guys on. I'm also going to try and survey this system, see if I can grab it before the AI can. This is where I'm going to leave this episode. I hope you've enjoyed part six. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment with any feedback, anything you found interesting. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.